Charles Dickens never went to the movies. Obviously, he'd been dead 20 years before they were even invented, but movies owe a lot to Charles Dickens. You see, one of his biggest fans was D.W. Griffiths, cinema's first superstar director, and in 1908, Griffiths had this idea. In his film, after many years, he wanted to cut two different scenes together to make it look like they were happening at the same time. His bosses, though, said it couldn't be done. The audience would just be too confused. But Griffiths knew it could work because he'd seen Dickens do it in his novels. As a result, we have cross-cutting, a technique used by editors in almost every film. Years after his death, Dickens changed a medium he never even saw. Here's another story. Um, so it's October 1962, and it's the Cuban Missile Crisis, right? You've got President Kennedy, and he's being told by his generals to launch missiles against Russia. The Cold War's just days away from turning hot. Kennedy doesn't know what to do, but he has been reading this book. It's The Guns of August by Barbara Tuchman. It's a history book about the start of World War I, and JFK was really affected by it. He gave copies to all of his advisors. And in the end, he decided he didn't want a book written called The Missiles of October. And so he backed down, and the crisis ended. Barbara Tuchman had just wanted to explain how World War I started. By accident, she prevented World War III. All of which makes me wonder, maybe our legacy isn't always what we achieve in our lives. Maybe sometimes it's who we inspire. <laughs>